Welcome everyone! In this video, we are in the Great League, showcasing another very powerful team featuring Clefable! Clefable, no longer just another boring charmer, this thing got fairy wind as we all know by now, and that has just made it extremely more dynamic. It is now able to apply way more charge move pressure, setting it up to be a very strong closer in the Great League as well as the Ultra League, which I am also excited for. So it will be the closer on this team, along with good old Sableye on the safe swap. Been absolutely loving Sableye this season. Uh, so clutch on the safe swap. Always has been. Dropped off a little bit when Noctowl came to prominence, but uh, it is uh, still very much effective. Uh, very good at either grabbing shield advantage or flipping switch outright. And also... On the lead to protect our our Clefable from the Steel types, we've got Stunfisk. Clefable also does not like Noctowl. Stunfisk on the lead handles those weaknesses quite well. You pair that very strong core with a very strong safe swap, and that is a recipe for a lot of success in the Great League. I was really excited to try out Fairywind Clefable, and I was not disappointed. It is quite good as a closer. And here we go, the Dream Lead Basti, but they safe swap uh, a pretty bad Pokemon for our back to Pokemon. Not the best for G-Fisk either, but G-Fisk happens to be our best answer, um, ironically. So we're going to look to bait them. Um, we have to preserve a little bit of health on our G-Fisk. Um, we don't have to be terribly healthy for the Basti, but relatively healthy. Uh, so we will let this next Frenzy Plant go. We are not giving them a two-shield advantage. They called our bait successfully. Very nice on them. Very brave as an EQ would have done quite a bit of neutral damage. And just going to look to chip this Venusaur further or grab a shield. They are just letting it all go. So we're going to come in with Sableye. Look to get ahead on energy. And we do just that with our Sableye. They come back in with the Basti here. And we do have a nice energy lead on this Bastiodon. So going to throw with proper timing and go for foul play number one here. It takes uh, several foul plays to do uh, much of anything to Bastiodon, as many of us all may know, Bastiodon, um, uh, effectively the tankiest Pokemon in the league. So uh, yeah, we're going to um, let this go. We need a shield for our closer, Clefable. Um, they're doing very well at preserving their shield advantage. We do live that Stone Edge. Rank 1 XL Sableye coming in clutch, able to get off one final foul play before it goes down. Now going to bring in G-Fisk and look to just go for the resisted Rock Slide. This Basti is low enough to where this plus a mud shot should just about get it out of here. But they're not sticking around for that. They've got a Medi in the back and oh my goodness, it is Clefable time. Now we are still down a shield. We are playing with that in mind. Uh, we have to play carefully. Going to shield up the Psychic. They have the shield advantage. So there's no reason to bait there. And we are, uh, speaking of baiting, going to bait with a Meteor Mash. Even if they let this go, it would do a decent amount of neutral damage. But we do successfully bait there. And we do outpace this Metachamp to the Moon Blast. So now we will fire off the massively super effective Moon Blast here with Stab grabbing that final shield. And we do comfortably tank a Psychic from this Metacham from this health range. So we are looking really good here. We just have to be cognizant of a potential catch. Switch timer is just about coming up. And I think we just beat the switch timer by a split second getting to this. And we are saying bye bye to the Metacham. And one mud shot takes out that Basti. Club Fable doing what it was meant to do on this team. That has closed the game strong. Good game, well played. Club Fable now one of the better closers in the Great League. You just have to keep it away from those steel types. But here we go. Lantern on the lead. Slightly positive lead for us as it is running Spark. They need to throw three charge moves or three surfs, I should say, to uh, win this. They can throw two, but we survive two and they cannot farm down with Spark. So we're going to go for the EQ and see what they want to do. If they shield, that may, that's a good indicator that they have at least one flyer in the back. And they do shield. So now what we're going to do is look to make a catch on Disableye, expecting at least a, uh, one flyer in the back. Uh, most most uh um most likely a knocked owl so trying to bait that out as clefable does not like knocked owl knocked owl is just a little too bulky but we draw out a pelipper instead okay very interesting i'm gonna go for this foul play here and they do let that go as they do tank one 
and um, they are at a weather ball plus a few um, plus some additional energy. So what we're going to do is shield this and make them make a decision. Do they want to give us switch or do they want to give us a shield advantage? That's what you want out of a good safe swap in um, Pokemon Go Battle League. They want to give us the shield advantage, so we'll take that. So we will now let this next weather ball go. And I'm thinking, I think I want to come in with Clefable and go for a uh, nice farm down. Loading up on energy is so nice on Clefable. Shields are now down on their end. And there, they do have an owl. So they were likely reading that we were looking to draw out the knocked owl. So they were saving it, but it's not going to help them, guys. It has no shields. That Moonblast does big damage. And we are in a very commanding position here. We comfortably tank a Sky Attack. No problem from the Noctowl. And um, I don't want to waste the energy by going Moonblast. This is very risky, uh, throwing this on the CMP. But my rationale was they already saw us throw Moonblast. So they might just be thinking that we're going to go straight Moonblast. But we do just go for the more uh, slightly less energy on the Meteor Mash. And we've got some energy to spare. Speaking of... Doing big damage on the Lantern. Gonna go for a nice little combo play to finish this one strong. We get to this Rock Slide. And we're saying bye-bye to the Lantern. Holy smokes. Clefable putting in the work yet again. You absolutely love to see it. That's gonna be a good game. Well played. I gotta say, Clefable very much improved with Fairy Wind being added to its move pool. And here we go. Speaking of Clefable, we had one on the lead. That's a beautiful lead. They safe swap a Medi, and this is even um, an even more beautiful uh, safe swap as we do counter swap with our Sableye. The hardest check to Medicham in the entire meta. You love to see it. Uh, Sableye in the back absolutely loves these Medicham safe swaps. Guys, you have no idea. And uh, gonna go for this foul play. We did tank the ice punch in there, shielding. Holy smokes! Never ever shield if you are a Medi up against the Sableye guys. You have zero chance of flipping it. Um, you are just drawing out the inevitable and wasting precious shields on your end. So we just play to the CMP here. Um, we get to it at the same time that they get to the ice punch and they shield yet again. No, we're not giving you, not giving you switch, uh, trader. Not gonna happen. That's too good of a lead to pass on. So uh, yeah, and they do rip off the band aid, realizing that it's not gonna happen for them. And this one's running charm. So that was very interesting to see. Um, even if it was running Fairy Wind, it's still uh, not very good for a Club Fable. So gonna fire off this EQ. Shields are down, doing big damage on the Charm Cliff Fable here. And uh, we tank everything. We hard wall uh, Cliff Fable like you wouldn't believe with our steel typing and uh, just gonna look to mud shot down this charm cliff able here leaving uh still very much healthy gonna mud shot down the medi what do they have in the back a whack in the back holy smokes you absolutely love to see it shields are down going for this big eq doing big damage and they do fire spin down but Sableye absolutely gobbles up the Metacham AWAC backline. We get to this, and we are saying bye-bye to the AWAC. Sableye loves that backline. You have no idea. Um, and uh, G-Fisk and Sableye going 2v3. Good game. Well played to our opponent. My goodness, Glyphable didn't even see the field in that last one. G-Fisk and Sableye 2 OP. And here we go, picking up a slightly positive lead coming in the form of Frostlass. We do outpace... And we can hit this for super effective with our rock slides here. But Frostless hits like an absolute truck, so their uh, charge moves are no joke either. And they are over farming by quite a bit here. Gonna let this go. We tank one of whatever Frostless throws here. They go for the Shadow Ball. Holy smokes. Both moves do hit for neutral, but uh, the fact that they went for that clued me in that they were likely looking to swap out. And they make a play into a Credili. So we're going to chip this with a massive neutral Earthquake because we only want to tank one charge move from this Credili. So we wanted that massive chip and uh, going to let this go. We do tank that no problem on our Clefable. And we will look to play to the CMP tie on their next charge move here. Clefable does win that CMP. And we're going to see if they want to give us a shield or they're going to go down with energy. They do let that go. Beautiful. We'll take that. Clefable putting in the work. You'll love to see it. And right about here, I thought they were one uh, off um, from their move. So uh, we mistimed that. 
misjudge that. So uh, we do go down with energy ourselves here, and we bring in Sableye to um, put in work here. And they've got a Galissapod in the back. Very interesting. I was not aware that we lost CMP to uh, Galissapod. Um, so that was um, interesting. Um, I'm taking note of that for sure. And we do shield up that liquidation. No defense drop. Going to go for this foul play here and grab a shield from the Galissapod here. So reading that they're going to just play the CMP tie here, we're going to look to catch that liquidation onto our G Fisk here. Had to make this catch because we were not winning CMP tie. And an even shield, you got to you gotta make a catch if you can, if you're able to in that situation. So now we are looking really good here. We now have the energy lead because we caught the move, grabbing that final shield. And we hit the move to trigger the CMP tie so that they could not catch our foul play here. And they go aerial ace, it does not matter. We triggered that CMP tie. We got this foul play here locked and loaded, which means that we're saying bye-bye to the Galissapod. And we are shadow clawing down this frost last. It is not making it to another move. And this time Sableye coming in clutch, closing the game strong. That's gonna be yet another good game. Well played. I gotta say, if you're looking to run Clefable, this is definitely one of the better Clefable teams you can run in the Great League. And here we go. We've got a nerfed Trevenant here on the lead. That's a neutral lead. Gonna come in with our Sableye. And we draw out an Azumarill. So this is um, okay. We can do quite all right in the two shields. We can actually win this. Uh, we do have to successfully bait, but I'm going to go right for the return here. They usually let the first one go, but they shield. That's a very early shield that they did not have to commit to. So seeing that, we're just fine. We're going to let this go. We're going to take that shield advantage and save it for our Clefable, our closer, uh, to perhaps have a shield advantage to do what it does best, and that is close the game strong. Coming, coming in with uh, G Fisk here. This is fairly neutral. Um, not uh, Most Azus these days are not running Hydro Pump. Um, they are generally on Play Rough Ice Beam, and they are running Ice Beam, so we do tank that no problem. And we can tank a second one um, if it came down to it. We're going to fire off this EQ here with proper timing, and they do let that go, not wanting to give us a, a two-shield advantage. This is just another Ice Beam. Going to let this go. We do survive it. And, um, yeah, so going to let that go and bank that energy. We're going to bank that energy. We don't know what their third is. So I opted to come in and get ahead on energy with Clefable. We did preserve that shield advantage, so we will shield this uh, next move here. And look to really overload, I'm telling you guys, with Fairy Wind, it charges these charge moves so fast. Being able to absolutely load up and have these charge uh, charge moves ready, locked and loaded, is the way to play Clefable here, guys. We do take out that Azu with a Meteor Mash. And we've got a Moonblast for the Trevenant doing big damage with Stab. You'd love to see it. Not planning on tanking a move from this very hard-hitting Trevenant here, so we will commit the shield here. And they've got a Medi in the back. Oh, you'd love to see it now. Because we've been on the field for so long, our health is now getting um, quite low. We're still not quite in Psychic range. Now we're just about there, predicting that they're going to overfarm by one, and we do predict that correctly. Oh, and we catch that Psychic onto our low health stun fist, making the plays in the Great League. You absolutely love to see it, and they do top left, realizing it was over. That was a very obvious catch that we were going to make, so we had to make the call that they would over farm by one, and that won us the game. Good game, well played. Oh, this Clefable team was absolutely putting in the work. It was a thing of beauty. And here we go, Lantern lead. Slightly positive for us, as I mentioned in uh, the previous Lantern battle here. They have to throw three Surfs. We tank two, and they cannot farm down. So uh, going to tank the first one. We do survive it quite comfortably. Going to wait a turn and go for the EQ here because a lot of Lanterns like to catch that EQ on their flyer that is often lurking in the back. And they let that go. Holy smokes, uh, trying to call a bait, I presume. So we pivot into our Sableye, and we are met with a Noctowl here. So this is okay. Not going to shield anything. Um... 
uh, it's not not really uh, not flippable unless they um, thoroughly misplay the, the mid-game matchup here. So just going to fire off the return here, and uh, they usually let it go, but they shield. Holy smokes. I've been finding that if they shield the owl, there's a good that's a good indicator that they have a medi in the back because they really want to get rid of the Sableye as they want the Metacham nowhere near the Sableye. So that's what I'm reading. That's generally the case if they shield the owl. There is no other reason to do that. And they have energy for days here. So I'm hoping that I can make it to this rock slide. They're going to get off the Shadow Ball. We're saving the shields for Clefable. And yeah, they do. Uh, they do trigger the CMP to the rock slide. Not going to let us throw it. We're not willing to shield. Going to save the shield advantage for our closer, Clefable. That's the goal with this team, guys. If you can secure a shield advantage for Clefable, it can absolutely put in the work. This is how you play Clefable in the Great League. Going to shield up that sky attack to preserve some health on our Clefable. And we will fire off the Meteor Mash just shy of their next sky attack here. We say bye-bye to the owl. And there it is. My team read was accurate. They had a Medi lurking in the back. Going to bait with a Meteor Mash as we would one shot with a Moon Blast with Stab. And we successfully bait. You'll love to see it. Clefable putting in the work. Holy smokes. Going to shield up the potential Psychic. Um, I imagine they're going to go straight forward. And we do successfully shield that. And we just have to be careful of a potential catch here. There's the catch. But the Lantern did have a Surf stored. I would, I would much rather tank a Surf from Lantern than a Psychic from Medi. So that is fine. We do farm down. And this Medi is absolute toast. It is still very healthy, but it has no shields. We have Moonblast with Stab. We're saying bye-bye to the Medi. Holy smokes, Clefable. I am telling you guys, it can close a game like you wouldn't believe. Good game, well played. This is how you play Clefable in the Great League. I'm telling you, if you want to run Clefable, give this team a try. It was quite good. And here we go. Not with a lead like that. Had a Medi. I like to actually safe swap Medi. Uh, safe swap Clefable. Uh, safe, excuse me. Safe swap Clefable on the Medi leads. Because Sableye is our hardest counter. You never want to safe swap your hardest counter. So we draw out a Lantern here. They let us get off a Moonblast. And they let us get to a second Moonblast. They have not thrown a move yet. And uh, we're now going to threaten a shield. But they just let it go. Holy smokes. They just fully sacked their Lantern. They didn't even throw a move. And they've got a Shadow A Slash in the back. So this is the one Steel type that we've got some play against. These Meteor Mash. That hits for neutral damage, guys because it does have an ice typing one of the few steel types that clefable actually has some play against uh and my goodness uh clefable put in the work they're taking out one and a half pokemon you love to see it they aggressive swap back into the medi not knowing what we had in the back and it and what we had in the back happens to be medi's worst nightmare as i mentioned sableye the hardest counter to metacham it is absolutely helpless but it does have a slight energy lead, so um, it does have that going for it. So we will shield. The A Slash does have loaded energy, and A Slash up energy can be quite lethal in the Great League. Going to fire off the foul play here, just shy of their next Ice Punch, drawing a shield. And now we will look to CMP them to the next Ice Punch here and force them to either give up that final shield or go down with energy. They give up the final shield, so now... What I want to do is uh, lure them into uh, making a combo play. It is far too tempting if they see a shield. That's what I wanted. I wanted to lure them and bait them into making a combo play to dump that energy that they had. They had a full move stored. I did not want to tank two drill runs on G Fisk, and they fell for the trick. They took the bait, hook, line, and sinker, so we tank one drill run. I did not want to tank two. That worked out beautifully. This Medi is energy dry. We've got a rock slide. It is resisted, but it's enough to say bye-bye to the Medi nonetheless. Holy smokes, I'm telling you guys. This Clefable team puts in the work. It was so much fun and very effective. Good game, well played. All of the moving parts on this Clefable team complement each other beautifully. And here we go, DD lead. Slightly positive for us as uh, their only um, meaningful damage comes from their fast move pressure with these uh, super effective counters. And we're going to look to fire off an EQ. They do tank it. They do not tank two, however, so we know that. Um, but... 
What we have to be careful of is a potential catch because I'm banking on most DD trainers know that they're not going to win this if we play correctly. So I'm not throwing my move expecting a potential catch at some point, but they are just staying in and I guess looking to soft lose lead here. And we still don't throw our move. So I'm, I'm kind of in my own head here and uh, we thoroughly misplayed this. Oh, it was so awful, and now I'm tilted for not playing that correctly, um, especially knowing that we have two excellent answers to a DD in the back. So at this point, I'm a little tilted, and uh, yeah, um, not playing ideally here. Going to go for the return. They do have a lantern here. We did tank the first serve. And I'm reading that there's at least uh, an ice type in the back. It could be an A slash. It could also be a dugong. Uh, those are two very common pairings with a Deoxys lead. And we are just letting all the surfs go. No one is shielded just yet. So now um, they still have three Pokemon. And we only have one, but shields are still up on both ends. We still don't know what they have in the back. This Lantern is absolutely terrorizing our existence. At this point, I've just basically resigned and I'm just going through the motions. I was so upset with uh, how we played that... Uh, <laughs> deoxys lead that i just kind of after that i just kind of checked out and i'm just going through the motions at this point so yeah got in my own head a little bit it is a dugong in the back as anticipated that is a very strong pairing with defense form deoxys and at this point i don't know we're just wasting time at this point it's the game is over it was over midway through uh, in that mid game matchup. Um, and yeah, this Dugong is far too healthy. There, This is not going to happen. We misplay, mismanaged that, that lead matchup and uh, just got really upset and frustrated uh, from then on. And uh, it was all downhill from there, my friends. Just going to let this go. It's over. So yeah, um, I not could have played that a little bit better, but it still would have been tricky either way. But good game. Well played to them. Oh, man, that last battle was absolutely brutal to have to watch again. But we pick up another DD lead. And at this point, I'm thinking some this is a this is the moment for redemption here. I was uh, determined to absolutely destroy this Deoxys here on the lead. Uh, so we do go for the EQ pretty early on and grab an early shield from Deoxys. They use they, they it's a 50 50 as to whether they they can tank it, but they usually shield knowing that this is not the best lead for them, although they are doing super effective. And like I said, DD leads love to catch the EQ and they do right on cue onto a drip club. That's what I was really concerned with with that last battle, but it didn't happen in that last battle. I was just waiting for them to catch, not throwing my move, letting them get the better of us. And that's what I was looking to avoid in that last battle. They all, they love to do that, guys. But this flyer um, happens to be quite weak to Sableye. So uh, that we do have going for us, although they did catch that double resisted damage. Um, and they do hit us with a mystical fire. We comfortably tank one, not going to tank another one, and we will shield this one. So we will now be double debuffed, uh, severely compromised on our attack stat, but we do get a nice healthy farm down on the Drift Blim. Leaving this matchup with loaded energy, and they've got a dark type in the back coming in the form of Obstagoon. So that is an excellent answer to Sableye in the Great League. Going to fire off these uh, debuffed returns. They still uh, slap the Obstagoon quite a bit, I got to say, guys. Even though they are double debuffed, that is just the power of Sableye. Holy smokes. And we do uh, get to another one as they cannot quite farm down. Look at that. Those are debuffed. And now we can just bring in our Clefable. And the Obstagoon is just about done. Gonna shield this up. Um, the Obstagoon does have energy, but Deoxys is going to be able to hit us the hardest. Uh, which is very ironic to uh, hear myself say, as Deoxys does not hit very hard at all. Uh, gonna fire off this Moonblast, doing big damage on the very tanky Deoxys. And uh, we can now comfortably tank whatever this is and comfortably farm down the DD here. It is the Psycho Boost. And we do get that farm down. Now this Obstagoon is absolutely helpless here up against Clefable. We hard wall uh, its energy like you wouldn't believe here. So uh, yeah, that does no damage. And we are carrying over some animosity, taking it out uh, from that previous battle, going for the massively overkill Moonblast, taking out all that frustration from that previous battle on that poor low health Obstagoon. Holy smokes.
Oh, man, but good game. Well played to them nonetheless. And that is the team, my friends. How about Cliff Fable in the Great League? I had been wanting to give it a try. I saw tremendous potential for Clefable as a closer in the Great League. Now being able to apply uh, some significant charge move pressure in the Great League, I saw it as a perfect opportunity to run it as a closer, guys. Uh, The goal is to preserve a shield advantage. We've got two Pokemon that are generally really good at securing a shield advantage in G-Fisk and Sableye. Setting up, uh, setting up Clefable in the end up a shield to absolutely sweep. That's how the team is designed. It sort of runs like an ABB style team, whereas G Fisk on the lead covers Clefable's uh, weakness of steel, and Clefable covers G Fisk's weakness from the fighters. Um, and you've got Sableye in the back as an added layer of fighting type coverage making for a very solid team comp overall but guys i had a blast i hope you all enjoyed as always i thank you for watching and keep up the grind thank you guys